Hello, Pastor Wayne Carpenter here from Christian Church for All Nations. I'm the worship director, and this is our morning devotional. Thank you for joining. This week, between Christmas and New Year's, I'm talking about new beginnings. Since we have the new year coming up, it seemed appropriate. And talking about certain people in the Bible that actually experienced new beginning and what it meant for them. Today, we're going to talk about David. Now, I think everybody understands or knows the story of David and Goliath. Even non-believers are fairly familiar with the story. It's used even in our culture in general, as uh, David facing Goliath, even in sports and so on and so forth. So there's this point where the Philistines and Israel are at a standoff. And Goliath is going around back and forth boasting about how uh, you know nobody can beat him. And finally, David has had enough. He is not in the army. His brothers are. And the story goes that he picks up his five smooth stones. He goes and slays Goliath. And all of a sudden, Saul, being the king at the time, approves of David because then the army of Israel goes and destroys the Philistines at that point. So now Goliath and King Saul are getting along well. Saul approves of David. In fact, it says in 1 Samuel 18, whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. So Saul made him a commander over the men of war, an appointment that was welcomed by the people and Saul's officers alike, very popular. But then Saul doesn't approve of David. What happens is, is there's a victorious battle. David just does what he does and he comes back victorious and they came out to meet King Saul. And this is what King Saul heard from the people that were greeting David coming back. They were saying, Saul has killed his thousands. David, his ten thousands. Now, King Saul doesn't approve of David. He's jealous. Made him angry. And so, at this point, Scripture says that Saul kept a jealous eye on him. Now... It gets to the point where David has to flee for his life because Saul's had enough. David's just far too successful. He's interfering too much with the king's reputation, if you will. And the king had his son, Jonathan, and Jonathan and David were fast friends. Immediately they got to really like each other and get to know each other. And Jonathan's not believing David. David's saying, Saul wants to kill me. And Jonathan saying, no, I don't really think so. My dad wouldn't do that. He hasn't, he, wouldn't, he hasn't said anything to me about this. Well, eventually, it says here in 1 Samuel 20 that uh, Saul is saying that, uh, okay, now go and get him, meaning David, so I can kill him. And then Jonathan's pleading with his father. Well, his father gets so upset that he actually threw a spear at Jonathan. So Jonathan goes to warn David, uh, you were right. It's time to go. Let's pray. I thank you, Father God, that our lives are not static. Things are not always just one way from the time we're born to the time we die. If we're in a difficult place, there's hope, Lord, that we can be in a better place. If we're in a great place, Lord, there's time to reflect and to consolidate our gains and to realize that there is going to be a day when things aren't going to be maybe as great as they are today. But then once again, we have hope that they'll be great again. So we can go through these things. We go through all of this, Lord, with you at our side as we submit our lives to you, Lord, that you're there with us 100% of the time and that things will work out and we will be with you eventually as we move on and we get promoted on to heaven. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So... David goes through a whole period here, and I'm not going to go through all of it. It would be a study in itself where he's avoiding being captured. He's making different alliances so he can get through this period of time. And, but eventually, Saul does die. And it isn't immediate, but David has his new beginning. And at one point, uh, even during that period, he passed up more than one chance to kill Saul. He had Saul dead to rights where he could have killed Saul outright. Even though Saul wanted to kill him, David respected God and would not harm Saul because Saul was the appointed king. But eventually Saul passes away 
and uh, David becomes king of Israel. So there's an accomplishment of David's. Now, you think slaying Goliath would be enough for one lifetime, but here we're coming back now after a very difficult period, and David is now king, and he starts to accomplish more things. So he becomes king of Israel. He reigns for 40 years. One of the first things he does is he captures Jerusalem. He defeated the Philistines and gave the Lord the glory for it. Very important. And if you look through his whole reign, he is defeating one after another after another of these peoples that are against Israel. So he has a long history of profitable and successful military campaigns. He brings the ark back to Jerusalem. He showed favor to the house of Saul. Now keep in mind, see, Saul was not showing favor to him. But Mephibosheth is a really good story in, in this whole context where David is showing heart, where he's showing that he is not taking what Saul did to him and carrying it forward to Saul's house. He's actually looking to bless Saul's house. And Mephibosheth was part of Saul's house. And so he took in uh, Mephibosheth and he actually made him part of his court, if you will, or part of the king's court. Uh, of course, there's the military victories. And at one point, David is described as a man after God's own heart. David also wrote about half of the books that are in the, are the uh, Psalms that are in the book of Psalms. And he eventually anointed Solomon as king. So the real story for today is the new beginning that David ended up with. In Ecclesiastes 7, 8, it says, the end of a thing is better than its beginning. So as we follow the Lord, it will be so for us as well. Let's pray. I thank you, Father God, that there will always be challenges, but certainly there will always be you there with us. Help us, Lord, to have the presence of mind to always lift up our needs to you, to always look to you for our salvation, to always look to you in everything we do. We thank you, Lord, that our new beginning is right in front of us. Whether we've already accepted you and we're in your presence, Lord, daily, there's still things that we can work on, new beginnings that we can have. And if you don't know you yet, Lord, if you feel that we feel you calling us, to know you, that we can say, yes, I want Jesus Christ as my Savior. I want that new beginning in my life. We thank you this is all possible through the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we'd be happy if you visited us at Christian Church for All Nations. We're at roughly 12 Mile in Shaner. And at uh, Sunday, we have 11 o'clock service. In the morning, that's our main service. And then also, we have Tuesdays with Pat. Tuesdays with Pat is a traditional service at 11 a.m. Highly recommend that service as well. And then on Wednesdays, we have Wednesdays from 6.30 to 7.30, another service with worship in the Word. We hope you can join us then. And if you don't see me tomorrow on the devotional, I would wish you a Happy New Year right now. Have a good day.